Welcome to the RARS 1992 review. We'll begin our look at 92 with the last day of 91. This is where we left off last year, the W4DW special event station at Raleigh's first night celebration and the kickoff to the city's 200th year. We operated HF on New Year's Eve all day and then moved to the repeater as Mayor Avery Upchurch sent a message by ham radio to the mayors of all North Carolina cities inviting them to Raleigh to be part of the year-long celebration. This is Avery Upchurch, the mayor of Raleigh, North Carolina, greetings to all you hams up there tuned in this afternoon. Two centuries ago this year, a plan was set forth to build a capital city in the wilderness. In March, Ken, N4ZBB, got this crazy idea. Maybe Rars could participate in Cerex and make a contact with the space shuttle. Well, we started too late to get a scheduled contact for the March mission, but we set up at Cary High School anyway. You know, at this point, none of us had ever even heard a signal from the space shuttle in our lives. This is Kilo Delta 4, India Sierra, Bravo, Cary High School. And we didn't hear one this day either. But it got us started and, well, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. You'll see later. Public service is important to ham radio, and RARS does its part. One way is by providing communication support to charity fundraisers, like this MS Society's Super Cities Walk. Okay, I'll pass the word on to Janet. Uh, and, uh, again, it looks like they're getting everything ready to roll here, and we're looking at still a quarter after nine to get things started. Uh, 84 hours. Over 800 people walked in this year's event. The safety and comfort of the participants is our top priority. And with our help, these events run smoothly. Okay, I copy that. Uh, N4 v command at rest stop point Raleigh. It's Raleigh, rest stop two. See the tag wagon down here. Take a couple people. Uh, I guess the tag wagon to uh, rest stop three. I've got mine. <laughs> I got mine. Dick, do you have yours? Rob? Show us your doggy. Show us your red doggy. Let's pop the red here. I promised, uh, what, four to four? Doug, how'd it go? It went very well. Very little uh, action. Everybody made it through great. Okay. The weather was super. Sometimes the RARS board of directors shows up and holds an unscheduled board meeting. <laughs> Okay. My name is Janet Mills. I'm the executive director of the Eastern North Carolina chapter of the National MS Society. And I would like to once again extend my thanks to all the wonderful ham radio operator volunteers who once again came out to support an MS event. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces and some new faces. And hope to see you all on May 17th, Sunday, May 17th, in Cary at McGregor Village for the Triangle Cycling Celebration. In May, Brian, KD4BFJ, led a survey party to the top of the D.H. Hill Library on the NC State campus to check out mounting supports for a new repeater antenna. The repeater will be operated in conjunction with the State Amateur Radio Club. And this is one of many trips to the 6-4 repeater site. They said, you're not going to take a picture of me, a Motorola technician, in a GE shirt. I just won't do it. This time, we rewired the rack cabinet and added Juliet's voice to the control system. Rick, stick your head out from back there and wave a second. That's not your head, but that's close enough. Wide 
CQ Magazine's new video production unit interviewed about a dozen RARS members to see if they wanted to use us in a new program series they're beginning. Here, producer Rich Moses in NW2L talks to Marty and Y4H to see while, what she knows about DX. DX to try to break through a pileup, or should they stay off to the sides? And no, to... break in, but, but uh, when you first hear it, listen to see what, how he's operating, first of all, and see where he's operating, whether he's listening up or down, or how far, whether he's going up and down, or what, up and down the bands. And, uh, of course, you've got to have your, your VFO to do that. A switchable polarization. And he talked to Carl, W4HJZ, about satellites. It's also switchable polarization. And the cables come down just below where we can see the bottom of the mass there. I've got, uh, so there are some, some differences from the low bands. In, in what ways are they similar? Well, hams are hams, I guess. Uh, uh, most of the activity that I do is on uh, the side band but uh, there is some CW activity and certainly uh, the CW station can be a, a lower powered, simpler station in order to make contacts, which is the same thing you have on the low bands. And he looked at Jim, WD4MYM's modest station. at the uh, McGregor Village for the MS Triangle Cycling Celebration for the well, for Multiple Sclerosis. And Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac in the background. If we go over to that van right there where the mechanics are, we can have some polka music. Here's our trusted vice president of ours. important question to ask you folks. Yes, sir. Why do you want everybody to send slower? To do what? Send slower. Send slower? Yes. I'm why sure. Why do you want everyone to send slower? I have no idea. <laughs> it should be at some area marked. Is that marked the picnic area? It's not really marked as a picnic area, but uh, there's a nature trail and all kinds of picnic tables and stuff around here. Same place where it was what, where we were last year. If it seems like almost every RARS member has a J-pole for two meters, maybe now you know why. What are your feelings about the radio? I don't hold with it, Bub. Uh, it displeases you? I don't hold with furniture that talks. PBS broadcast a documentary on the beginnings of radio, which featured the historic words of a longtime RARS member. Enemy heavy cross shelling and bombing. They have been shelling us faster than you can count. Arms weak from pounding key long hours. No rent. Short rations. Damage terrific. Too much for guys to take. Corregidor used to be a nice place. It's haunted now. They have got us all around and from skies. 
My name, Irving Strobing. Get this to my mother and tell my mother how you heard from me. Stand by. And you've heard of Rescue 911. Now the story of Rescue by Radio. From North Carolina's news leader, this is the 530 First News. Amateur radio operators have come together to help save the life of one of their own. When a call for help came out over the airwaves a couple of weeks ago, ham operators from all across the state responded and formed a life-saving network. Renee McCoy has more on this remarkable story. 48-year-old Clyde Starling faces a rough journey to recovery. Putting wooden pegs into a board is a real struggle because the left side of his body was completely paralyzed the night he suffered a stroke. And I drug myself out of bed and drug myself through the house to the front room and got a hold of my radio and placed a call for help. And I heard Clyde come on and make a call. And his voice sounded strange. He just didn't sound like himself. Woody Winstead's first reaction was to call 911, and he wasn't the only ham operator to dial for help. Calls coming in far away, Jacksonville and Wilmington 911, and uh, since I don't have a phone, they had no way to know where I lived. The problem they were having is that Clyde lives out in the country and didn't have a, a normal street address. Woody then issued a broadcast for help, asking anyone who knew directions to Clyde's home to call fast. A response came from Youngsville, and emergency crews soon arrived. I doubt seriously if Clyde would have lived till the following morning, if he would have been unable to get assistance. As Clyde struggles through therapy at UNC Memorial Hospitals, he keeps his radio close, because he's motivated by his amateur radio friends who stay in touch as he recovers. Uh, glad to hear you're feeling better and uh, and doing well, and understand you're going home in about a week. Yes, uh, next Tuesday is that I get to go home. Fighting back the tears, you know, Clyde you know, says he has a lot to live for. Is, my real motivation is God. He has helped me through it all. Seven three, Clyde. You take care, and we'll talk to you later. KD four BFF, KJ four SO clear. Renee McCoy, WRL TV five News, Chapel Hill. A great story. Ham radio operators tell us their primary objective is public service to everyone. In this case, they were able to help a good friend. Boy, no kidding. VHF contest antenna raising requires almost superhuman strength. Yeah, uh, <laughs> scene three, take two. <laughs> I had to do that. Where's the clapboard? Uh, well, we're going to have some good food today. We got uh, new technique Mark's trying here where we're not going to turn the pig, we hope. Second time he's tried to do it, going to cook it bottom side downwards. Over here is where Dave is going to hold forth with the yard bird. We're going to cook about 40 halves of yard bird for those yard bird lovers, about half grilled and half barbecued. And of course, we're going to have a lot of slaw that the girls are making and a lot of tater salad. So I think it'll be a real good feed come this evening. We are working on five gallons of banana pudding for those of us purists that think banana pudding does go with barbecue. That's right. Sherry is making five gallons of uh, banana pudding. Well, this is kind of a tradition at Rars function. This is the old Rars keg here. It, although it has a light tap, it's actually Budweiser. We'll have it and it'll be here through tomorrow afternoon so all the operators will not get hot and bothered and all worked up about the contest. CQ contest, CQ contest, W4DW contest. CQ contest, CQ contest, W4DW contest. Rob, how would you describe 220? Well, we have a double fisted operation here, but it's uh, pretty slow so far. The, it's early yet. We're only uh, oh, five hour, almost five hours into the contest, and we have four entries in the log. We're, we're hopping. It's really hot. It's hot. <laughs> CQ contest, CQ contest, W4DW contest. And on into the night. The VHFers pile up the points. CQ contest, CQ contest, Whiskey 4 Delta Whiskey, W4DW Fox Mike 05. For field day this year, RARS returned to Umstead Park, someplace we'd been a few years ago. Here is that field day, Whiskey 8 Fox Yankee. 
Whiskey 8 Foxtrot Yankee from W4DW, 4 Alpha, North Carolina. Over. I got 4 Alpha Ohio, and we are Whiskey 4 Delta Whiskey, W4DW, QSL. Okay, screw that one up. Uh, go back and crack it. Whiskey 4 Delta Whiskey. QSL, good luck in the contest. I QSL your 4 Alpha, and good luck in the contest. And for uh, W4DW. Whiskey 5 Itchy Underwear, this is Whiskey 4 Delta Whiskey. Uh, radio, radio, Whiskey 0, Radio, Radio. Whiskey 5 Itchy Underwear, copy 3 Alpha North Texas. Yes, sir. Should have put North on Texas, clean North for North field. North <laughs> Texas, <laughs> Texas, 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 Texas,
I was at field day, and uh, one of our friends asked me if I wanted to operate, and I started operating and just got interested that way, and then I worked with my dad to pass my license. My license. Yeah, so... Uh, Kevin Littlewood, KC4THW, isn't old enough to drive yet, but he still operates mobile with his handheld bicycle mobile. Kevin and his dad mounted his HT in a water bottle holder. They put an antenna on the back of the bike and wired up a headset microphone. Now Kevin can talk while he rides and still keep both hands on the handlebars. Yeah, well, once I get my code, I'll probably join you on the HF band. Kelly, how did you get interested in ham radio? How long have you been a ham? I've actually only been like... Scene three, take two. <laughs> I had to do that. Where's the clapboard? I got interested in ham radio when I was 13 years old. Uh, I grew up in uh, eastern North Carolina and discovered an old radio that my father had in World War II up in the attic. I rejuvenated it and started listening, thinking that I had discovered my own hobby, which was later turned out to be DX. About a year, a year and a half ago, my son Brian and I uh, were listening to a scanner. I had spent my entire life playing sports and Brian is a musician and we were looking for an activity that we could do as father and son. Uh, after listening to the scanner for a while on two meters, uh, we went out to field day. I knew what to expect. Brian had never shown any interest in radio, but was bitten by the bug. He thought it was the most fascinating thing in the world. And it turned out to be a pleasant surprise because amateur radio has turned out to be the one father-son activity that we both have grown with and it has brought us closer together. And in Pineville, the wind blew this tractor-trailer rig onto its side. The driver hurt his neck and his back. The storm knocked out power to some 9,000 customers. When severe storms hit like that, it's sometimes tough to keep on top of any damage it's inflicting. And that's where ham radio operators can help. WTVD's Gail Pascal tells us how. This is AI Zero K for Skywarn. Jerry Stuckel has been a ham radio operator for almost a quarter of a century. It's a hobby, but more importantly, a valuable weather tool for the National Weather Service. When parts of the heart of Carolina were under a tornado warning and subject to flooding in many areas, Stuckel was coordinating on-the-spot reports from other hams who were keeping an eye on severe weather. Currently, the Weather Service is interested in information from the south and eastern parts of the Weather Service coverage area. The only thing that I have at this particular time that I know of in a flash flood Ham operators have always been an asset to the National Weather Service by providing some needed information about weather conditions. But it wasn't until 1985, after the 84 Red Springs tornadoes, that the group became a weather service program known as Skywarn. Skywarn was particularly helpful in Wednesday storm, where heavy rains made it difficult for meteorologists to see all they needed to on the radar. When the uh, transmitting antenna gets wet, it interferes with the transmission of the radar signal, and so we don't get a very clear view of what's happening. Plus, he says, on-the-spot reporting by Skywarn keeps them abreast of any weather damage on the ground. This flooding on Globe Road near RDU, which had some motorists stranded, is called in by a ham operator. Any stations with severe weather to report, uh, please call AI. Stuckel is the emergency coordinator for Skywarn, which is made up of all volunteers. It's rewarding to know that uh, when there is severe weather out there, we can let the weather service know so they can get the warnings out to the people in time so that uh, possibly uh, property damage and lives could be saved. That, he says, is what public service is all about. Gail Paschal, WTVD 11 News, Rock. And at 639, the question is, will those ham operators be busy again today? Maybe. Okay, folks, I'll make it short and sweet. Ron Gonski from the National Weather Service is here to present to us this evening. This is spotter training. This is official spotter training. I was here a few months ago in June and uh, talked to you a little bit uh, about severe weather and uh, safety, weather safety. Uh, out and about and you see thunderstorms that look something like this where they have a broad anvil top like this chances are those thunderstorms are very very strong thank you gail you make a good point well the only way to get information into and out of some of those hardest hit areas has been shortwave radio and once again ham radio operators have stepped in to help operators like fred new in spring lake have monitored the airwaves all day and helped keep the lines of communications open. 
Much of the radio traffic was about the damage in South Florida, but one of the most disturbing calls came from the Bahamas, where only one ham station was on the air, and an unknown operator was saying medical supplies, fuel, and fresh water are in very short supply. Primarily, uh, what I'm hearing is that there's major, major damage down on uh, uh, Russell's Island, and uh, many or most all the boats are damaged. Uh, of uh, 33 houses uh, in one of the settlements down there, uh, six are left standing, uh, the, and those have major damage also. News says the Ham Network has already relayed hundreds of messages to and from family members in the hard-hit areas, but he's also hearing that ham operators in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi are taking a cue from Florida and getting ready for the worst. You'll find RARS members at ham fests across the southeast. The Shelby Ham Fest is the largest in the state, and our regular flea market crew wouldn't miss it. What you reaching for, Tim? Oh, treasure. <laughs> Here we come, folks. 1920, 21 British Siemens. Uh, probably a, a naval receiver or something else like that. Did you just get this here today? Got it yesterday. Found it bright and early in the morning. We were lucky we did because, boy, I'll tell you, it would not last it long. One of Shelby's traditions is rain. You don't suppose this storm's going to hit the ham fest, do you? Next time you're in Charlotte, you might stop by Discovery Place and check out the amateur radio station operated by the Mecklenburg Amateur Radio Society. It's right next to the restaurant, and you don't have to pay admission to get in. In September, we installed the long-awaited new 44495 repeater. rocket ignition and liftoff, liftoff of Endeavour on America's 50th space shuttle flight. All summer long, Ken N4ZBB and the CEREX committee planned for this moment. The shuttle Endeavour's liftoff started another countdown to our scheduled contact. CEREX is a communications experiment. On board Endeavour is a special amateur radio station. It's actually a modified walkie-talkie, the kind you might see a policeman carry but it's set up to operate on an amateur radio frequency. Two of the Endeavour astronauts, mission specialist Dr. Jay Apt and payload specialist Dr. Minoru Mori, are licensed amateur radio operators, and they use this special radio to talk to ham radio operators around the globe. On September 16th, the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society was scheduled to contact the shuttle. We set up temporary amateur stations at Cary High School, East Wake Middle School, Effie Green Elementary School, and West Millbrook Middle School. These stations were linked by radio to two Earth stations located in North Raleigh. The Earth stations are really just the home stations of Rob Oates and Carl Ebhardt. Rob and Carl have antenna systems designed to let them communicate with the amateur radio satellites, and that makes them perfect for communicating with the shuttle as well. Four students, one at each school, were chosen to talk to the astronauts. The students were to ask questions and receive a live reply. The questions were prepared in advance, and everything had to go quickly because the shuttle would be in communications range for only a few minutes. The whole operation was broadcast live by WLFL, Fox 22 Television.
Good morning, I'm David Allen, and in just a few minutes, we will be taking you live to Cary High School. Students there are preparing for an experience of a lifetime. With the help of the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society, students will be making contact with the shuttle Endeavor. Also talking At 9.32 a.m., the shuttle was supposed to appear over the radio horizon. It should be coming up here any minute. We can see on our screen above the STS Plus tracking program. N5 QWL, here is KM4OH. Over. N5 QWL. Here is KM4OH. But something went wrong. For several tense minutes, Sarex control station Rob Oates called to the shuttle, but received no reply. N5 QWL. Here is KM4OH. Over. Suddenly, astronaut J. Ab's voice boomed in. Kilo Mike 4 Oscar Hotel, Kilo Mike 4 Oscar Hotel, this is Endeavor Comic. Hey, all right! N5 QWL. Kilo Mike 4 Oscar Hotel. He was calling us, but apparently couldn't hear our response. Katie Y S B. Yeah. WL, KM4OH. Just before the shuttle sped out of range, we did establish contact, and the students attempted to ask their questions, but it was too late. Question is, how long have you been a ham radio operator, and how has it enhanced your career? Over. The students and the ham radio operators were disappointed and frustrated. But NASA offered us a second opportunity the next day. This time, they asked us to use a simpler communication system. So we brought the students to one of our Earth stations, the ham station at the home of Carl Ebhardt. Once again, the shuttle came into range. There he is. Rob called. N5, QWL, here is KM4OH, over. And this time, we made contact. And what a contact. Yeah, good morning, Endeavor. Your signal is still weak here, still weak, please. Try another transmission, over. My name is Kevin Carter. I'm a senior from Cary High School, and my call sign is KD4ISB. The question is, how long have you been a ham radio operator, and how has it enhanced your career? At first, the shuttle pilot Kirk Brown answered Kevin Carter's question. His voice was lost in noise. But soon it sounded like he was in the room with us, and the students made their historic contact. He was saying he's not a ham radio operator. Nicole, hold up close. My name is Nicole Furl. I'm a seventh grader at East White Middle School. What do you do in case of a medical emergency while you're in orbit? Over. Over. If you'd like to see the complete Cerex contact, a videotape is available from Mars. Boy, has this been a once-in-a-lifetime kind of day for four Wake County school kids. They held a conversation that was literally out of this world. The four students talked to the captain of the Space Shuttle Endeavor as it circled the Earth. It was a project of the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society. WTVD's Dave Bolick listened in. It seemed like Nicole Farrell sat in that chair at East Wake Middle School forever yesterday morning. Well, first of all, I got sleepy, and, um, <laughs> and I got disappointed because we didn't talk to the astronauts yesterday. Nicole was one of four Wake County students chosen to talk to the Space Shuttle Endeavors. It sailed 163 miles overhead yesterday. They tried to get through, but they didn't. 
The space shuttle goes around the Earth about every hour and a half. Even though they failed to make contact yesterday, they did have another chance today. Yeah, good morning, Endeavor. Your signal Today, is everything worked like a charm. Nicole got to ask her question. What do you do in case of a medical emergency while you're in orbit? If it was really, really serious, we'd have had land and uh, they'd get up to a hospital as soon as we could. Over. She and the other students got more than they bargained for. They talked to Captain Curtis Brown, who's from Elizabethtown near Wilmington, for about 10 minutes. And they asked about his favorite view from space. I was sitting over North Carolina looking at the outer banks and uh, the coastline and trying to find my hometown. What energy source powers the endeavor? Well, Nicole, that's a good question also. Uh, what we have on board is uh, cryogenic oxygen and hydrogen. When it was over, the students and their parents and their teachers were delighted they had made contact. I was really scared that we wouldn't, but then as soon as they replied, I was just really happy. I'm still shaking. <laughs> oh, Captain Brown, the North Carolina native, managed to duck the big question of the day. It came from Nicole. Do you like North Carolina or North Carolina State? <laughs> The question was covered as static as Endeavour mercifully cruised out of radio range. Dave Bullock, WTVD 11 News, Raleigh. Guess we'll never know. We may never know. That one. But still ahead on W. This is serious public service. The MS-150 is a two-day event. Can you give me your direction? Two, two rest stop number two. Two at rest stop number two. You guys got a map there, yeah. but... Uh, from rest stop number one, you need to uh, State Road 1777, the Blackjack Grimson Road to take the right. Let me know if you got all that. On Saturday, nearly a thousand bike riders rode 75 miles from Greenville to Camp Seagull down near the coast. Hams from RARS and from the Brightleaf Amateur Radio Club in Greenville provided communication support at rest stops and in sag wagons all day. And on Sunday, we helped the bikers ride 75 miles again, back to Greenville. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Okay. Bye. The MS-150 requires a lot of time and dedication, both from the riders and support volunteers like us. How's the ham radio business? Doing fine, enjoying ourselves immensely, and uh, glad that uh, we could all help out with the communications today and yesterday. It's really been an experience, my first time, and I definitely plan to be here next year and many years thereafter, I hope. RARS is a big club, around 500 members, 
but within RARS there are many smaller clubs. The special interest groups have their own meetings, usually with between 10 and 30 members. As opposed to the type of signal level it would take to propagate, say, an FM voice. Again in 92, Jim, N4BYO, and Lynn, KO4QH, ran two license classes, putting about 40 new hams on the air. If the repeater seems kind of busy lately, that just may be why. The classes run two nights a week for six weeks, and each subject area is taught by a different volunteer instructor. Joe, WA4GIR, is teaching here. And most of the people you see in this class have call signs beginning with KD4W. Is it treasure or is it junk? Well, bring it to the auction in November and find out. This year, Jack, W0UCE, was our very professional auctioneer. But I have to apologize, Jack. You see, your cameraman was called away early to be a Skywarn net control that night, so I don't have you on tape. But don't worry. Most of this stuff will be back next year. Many RARS members are active in Aries, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service. In November, Wake County Emergency Coordinator, Tom, KM4LB, set up orientation meetings for the people who will be operating the EOC stations. We toured both the Wake County EOC. Since they're paying these people, we don't have to pay more. So, uh, we're, I'm going to go through all the hardware here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, and the North Carolina State EOC. Is this it? This is it. That way. Nancy and Mitchell up in there. They want to report the state. There are six area um, amateur radio PCs for each of those areas. So, um, the RARS volunteer examiners are a very busy group. Led by Vince, AA4MY, the VEs give tests every other month at club meetings, at the end of each RARS class, and at several ham fests, like the JARS Fest in November. When tornadoes hit Hillsborough in November, RARS members helped Skywarn all night. And then Okra, the new club in Orange County, set up an Aries operation to help cope with the disaster. And RARS members pitched in with that effort as well. After the immediate emergency was over, HAMS helped the Red Cross provide assistance and meals to relief workers. And we got the opportunity to explain our operation to Congressman David Price, who was touring the relief effort. This year we moved the Christmas party to our regular December meeting night at the Y. You know, this food line is beginning to look familiar. There are no hungry hams in Mars. We took a break from the non-stop eating to swear in the newly elected club officers. This is always a very solemn occasion. Please the <laughs> And Santa Claus arrived to make children of all ages very happy.
And we help Santa make a few more kids happy by bringing Operation Santa Claus to Rex Hospital. Jim, N4BYO, Lynn, KO4QH, and Cindy, KD4ACW, put the Rex kids on the air, and the repeater managed to reach Santa all the way up at the North Pole. North Pole, N4BYO, Raleigh, North Carolina, calling North Pole. Over. in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I have Teeter here in the room, and Teeter, how old are you? How old are you? How many, how many years are you old? You're three years old, okay. And we'll close 92 the way we began, a New Year's Eve first night special event station. W4DW helps Raleigh say Happy New Year around the world. 40W Whiskey Four Delta Whiskey Special Event Station here in Raleigh, North Carolina, celebrating the two things, the bicentennial celebration, actually the end of the bicentennial celebration of the city of Raleigh, and the second First Night Raleigh. Uh, first Night Raleigh is...